one of my viewers asked me to do a video on this article. It is called How to Pray When Someone You Love Is Stuck in Sin. I believe the website is Lies Young Women Believe. Okay. So let's skip all of this right here and go to number one. Number one, pray for them to see their sin as God sees it. But your iniquities have made a separation between you and your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you, so that he does not hear. Isaiah chapter 59 verse 2. So the first thing is for you to pray for them to see their sin as God sees it. So you are asking God for this to happen. Number two, pray for their hard heart to soften, which I do myself sometimes. And I will give you a new heart and a new spirit. I will put within you and I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. Hmm. Ezekiel chapter 36 verse 26. Number three. Pray for them to recognize the kindness of God? Or do you presume on the riches of his kindness and forbearance and patience, not knowing that God's kindness is meant to lead you to repentance? Romans chapter 2, verse 4. Number 4. Pray for them to have a desire for God's word. But he answered, it is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Matthew chapter 4, verse 4. Number 5. Pray for God's word to do surgery in their heart. For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword piercing to the division of soul and of spirit, of joints and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. Number 6. Pray for the consequences of their sin to become clear to them. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight so that you may be justified in your words and blameless in your judgment psalm Chapter 51, verses 3 through 4. Number 7. Pray for them to be surrounded by people who will speak truth into their life. My brothers, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and someone brings him back, let him know that whoever brings back a sinner from his wandering will save his soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. James chapter 5 verses 19 through 20. Number 8. Pray for them to recognize that only God can satisfy their deepest needs. For he satisfies the longing soul and the hungry soul he fills with good things. Psalms chapter 107 verse 9. Number 9.
pray for them to know how much God loves them, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Ephesians chapter 3 verses 17 through 19. Number 10. Pray for them to repent. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Matthew chapter 3 verse 2. Okay. Second part. Two prayers not to pray. <laughs> While you're praying, here are two prayers not to pray. Number one, get him God prayers. My pastor calls those prayers rooted in a desire for God to punish others as get him God prayers. If someone you love has sinned against you, these kinds of prayers may be tempting. Keep in mind that God has forgiven you of much, even though you don't deserve it. Pray that he would do the same for others, even if they've hurt you. Number two, plank eye prayers. We all sin, we all desperately need God's forgiveness. This is important perspective. When we are praying about sin in someone else's life, if someone you know is stuck in sin, pray like crazy, but keep your own sin in mind. Jesus put it this way, why do you see the speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye when there is the log in your own eye? You hypocrite. First, take the log out of your own eye and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. Matthew chapter 7 verses 3 through 5. God is in the business of dealing with sin. There is no sin too big for him to forgive and no sinner too far for God to take them back. As you wait for him to do the miraculous, redemptive work only he can do, keep praying with great expectation. Do you know someone stuck in a pattern of sin? Which of these prayers will you start praying on their behalf? So, I believe the author is Aaron Davis. So, this concludes how to pray when someone you love is stuck in sin. God bless.